Time is fleeting. Madness takes its toll. But listen closely. Not for very much longer. I've got to keep control. Ever since there's been a Hollywood, there have been cult movies for fans to follow for one reason or another. But when they made the Rocky Horror Picture Show, they threw away the mold. Never has there been a cult movie like this one. Let's do the time war again. Let's do the time war again. I've seen Rocky Horror almost 400 times. It's just a jump to the left. I've seen Rocky Horror 250 times. With your hands on your hips. And tonight's my 350th time. 302 times. 267 times. There's no harm in giving yourself over to absolute pleasure. We're just like a family. Very, very strange. I'm speechless. <laughs> When the movie begins, you're not going to believe what happens in the audience. Like you're under sedation. The fans actually get up and take control. And there's more of a show going on in the aisles than there is up on the screen. My name is Sal Piero, and I'm president of the National Rocky Horror Picture Show Fan Club. Tonight's going to be my 425th time seeing this film. You know, the Rocky Horror Picture Show has been a midnight phenomenon in this country for almost four years now. Four years running at midnight, and it started right here in the village, right here in Greenwich Village. It's just a jump to the left. Of course, this isn't just a New York City thing anymore. It's gone nationwide, worldwide happening wherever people want and need to be different. There's more to being a Rocky Horror fan than just putting on a costume. <laughs> That's too easy. And it's only half the fun. No, to really crack into the cult, you've got to believe your fantasy and then go out and be it. You've got to turn life into your own special kind of dream movie and play out your favorite role at center screen. Outside of the theater, hours before the Rocky Horror Picture Show begins, fans start lining up. In costume, with weird makeup on, with tape recorders playing the soundtrack. All waiting in anticipation, whether they've seen the movie a hundred times before or never before. The real aficionados have a nickname for these newcomers. They call them virgins. We'd like to welcome you all here to Rocky Horror at the H Street Playhouse and a warm welcome to all you virgins! <laughs> Rocky Horror is more than a movie, it's a way of life, and it means a lot to all of these people. Five 
five times. And I'll go back for another 200. How many times, Debbie? 250. 250 times. How many times, Jenny? 110. 110. And everybody in the front of the line is like that. Well, the audience participation, it just gradually went from cheering and booing and singing along with the songs to somebody throwing out the first line. In fact, it was Louis Faris, a kindergarten teacher from Staten Island, who replied to Charles Gray's comment, I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. He screamed out, how strange was it? And audience participation began. I mean, then everybody tried to top one another, and then the rice, and then the newspapers, and then the dressing up, and the toilet paper. And then, then you know, we had props, we had the lines, we had the costumes. I mean, what else was there to do but to actually get up and do the movie? Some people look at all this, the costumes and the play acting, and they misunderstand. They think there's something sick or sinister, but nothing could be further from the truth. Because Rocky Horror fans are as normal as anybody else. All they're doing is dressing up, letting loose, and taking part in a little bit of free expression just for the fun of it. It's just an old-fashioned street theater, brought up to date, and moved indoors. Nothing more, and nothing less. I'm not much of a man. First time I saw the fans, I'd gone to New York and I went to see them at the cinema and it was incredible. I mean, I'd heard about it, but I had no idea to such detail that they went here and perfecting the costume. Part of the fun of doing Rocky Horror comes from the perfection of it. The real challenge for the live audience is trying to keep up with the words and music on the screen. They say it's a kick to take the original of something and try to live up to it. I could show you my People favorite. would come and say to me, hey, have you seen what they're doing with your movie? I've been making a man with blonde hair and a tan, and he's good for a living man. Tension. And finally I went to see it. It was possibly the best piece of theater I've ever seen. It encapsulated live action with filmed image, with audience participation, and three out of three ain't bad. The Rocky Horror Picture Show is all about Brad and Janet. Two nice, young American kids who get a flat tire in a rainstorm one night and wander into the castle of Dr. Frank N. Furter, a mad scientist, who is about to unveil his creation. Not a monster, but a muscle man. Magenta. Columbia. Go and assist Riff Raff. Brad and Janet get caught up in all kinds of crazy situations and wind up never being the same. It's almost like the kids of the 50s getting caught up in a time warp and suddenly landing in the middle of the 70s. Enchanté. <laughs> the whole Rocky Horror cult phenomenon began right here in the village over five and a half years ago. But Rocky Horror began thousands of miles away in London. Do you realize it's been eight years? Since what? Since Rocky. Am I that old? Yes. Eight, <laughs> eight, eight years ago, I was 14. I am that old. <laughs> what were you doing eight years ago? The Rocky um, Horror Show. <laughs> What's the Rocky Horror Show? What's the Rocky Horror Show? Who is that guy? Uh, Fill a boy in, will you? I would like, uh, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. How strange was it? Well, Rocky Horror was born in 1973, not as a movie, but as an experimental stage musical, booked for only six short weeks at a workshop theater. To everyone's surprise, the show exploded into a super hit, the hottest ticket in London in years. Fans went crazy, and while Hollywood was talking movie, the Rocky Horror phenomenon was often running wild on stages all over the world. And then, of course, it went on to um, Rome, Paris, Sydney, Madrid, Los Angeles, Los Angeles. Soon, the Rocky Horror Picture Show had become the first ever audience participation cult movie in motion picture history, and I wasn't in it. Star Trek groupies like to brag about their international conventions but they come off like bridge club tea parties next to a Rocky Horror get-together. <laughs> this is serious fantasizing. 
a pop cult tied closer together than any other on Earth, just for the outrageous fun of it all. People from every background you can imagine, each and every one of them walking, talking, and living the message of their favorite movie. Since you're going to be coming up as a group of Franks or a group of Magentas or a group of Columbias, you really want to stand out. And what I said in the last contest is, show the judges lots, lots of attitude. Like, let's show some attitude so the judges can pick you out amongst the other people on the stage. Okay, now we need Rockies. How many Rockies do we have? The high point of any Rocky convention is the costume contest, where cult members get to climb up on that stage and do their number. And simply looking like your favorite character isn't enough to win. You've got to have the attitude. And that means bringing that character to life from the inside out. This is the big leagues. The ultimate challenge with the ultimate reward. The approval and applause of your peers. cults, one thing leads to another. Time marches on, things change. And now, after six years, they've taken the hero and heroine of the Rocky Horror Picture Show and put them in a brand new movie. It's called Shock Treatment. this week and I announced it last night for the first time and for anybody who's here tonight for the first time um, then listen okay um, tomorrow I'm being flown to England because I'm gonna be in the sequel to Rocky Horror Sal Piro. Sal Piro? You're from New York? Yes. He knows me. In the Rocky Horror Picture Show, Brad and Janet are forced to spend the night in a weird castle. But in the new movie, Shock Treatment, it's even stranger. They start out on a TV game show, and they end up inside a primetime insane asylum. Would the first couple who seem to have made the hash of their marriage and cooked their goose step this way, please? Yo! That's us, Brad. Richard O'Brien, who wrote both Rocky Horror and Shock Treatment, says that Brad and Janet are victims of the modern world we live in. Their marriage is a mess, their lives are a mess, and that's something everyone can relate to not just rocky people i am sick of being humiliated by you here's some more prizes for me here on marriage dear blender you won't blend into the background for this in your home won't you help the first defender or toaster caught up in the popularity ratings don't you put the burn on me the kitchen or crying in the bedroom all night. I would have been proud of them. The shower curtain. Wash those moves away. Oh, won't you help me to be certain? Oh, to be. Don't you put the squeeze on me. Kitchen 
you know crying in the bedroom all night <laughs> If the characters and music of shock treatment seem to have a touch of Rocky Horror to them, there's a very good reason. A reason named Richard O'Brien. He's a little short on hair, but he's long on talent, especially when he's plugged into the music of his longtime composing partner, Richard Hartley. Okay, let's just get the last fire. Making shock treatment was something extra special, a family affair, a reunion of many of the same creative people that first brought Rocky Horror to the screen. Back again to direct all the fantasy is Australian Jim Sharman. Just like Rocky, he broke in on the stage, but he made it big in the movies. The look is like Rocky too, thanks to the crazy costumes of Sue Blaine and the wonderful weirdness of production designer, Brian Thompson. Feeding time. And at the top, out of sight but in control, that's where you'll find Rocky executive producers Lou Adler and Michael White, and producer John Goldstone. Get that shadow under the chin. You're blinded by romance, you're blinded by science. Your condition is critically grave. But don't expect mercy from such an alliance. Suspicion of tradition, so you wave. You need a bit of ooh, your treatment. Take a jump in like a real live wire. You need a bit of ooh, your treatment. So look out, mister, don't you? We had never discussed a sequel to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And six years late, one day Richard O'Brien came to the office and said he thought he had a good idea for a film, which he then told me. I loved the idea. And many months later, and a lot of work and effort, here we are in production with shop treatment. something about shock treatment. Rocky Horror was the 50s meeting the 70s. And we all went from being little Brads and Janets to becoming, at least in spirit, all Frankenfooters, okay? And the person we have to especially thank for that state of mind is Richard O'Brien. Ever since I was a little boy. This is something brand new from Richard O'Brien. A giant step that moves out of the 70s and into the 80s. To be discreet, there's one thing you just can't beat. On a strapless, backless, classical little black dress. Well, first you go rip, rip, rip. Then you go slip, slip, slip. Then you whip it and zip, zip, zip. And spin it up to the hip, hip, hip. And as you strip, strip, strip. For that soft caress as you slip, slip, slip into that little black dress. Hitler. It's fun to see the people from Rocky Horror in different roles. The same creative geniuses that brought you Rocky. It'll be great. Well, first you go rip, rip, rip. The thing for the fans to remember is that Shock Treatment's not a sequel, not a prequel, but an equal to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs>
about a phenomenon that just won't quit, the Rocky Horror Picture Show still plays to standing room only weekend audiences in more than 200 theaters coast to coast and around the world. And now comes shock treatment with a whole new creative dimension. And the only call of its kind keeps right on going bigger and better. More than ever, for those who follow the Rocky Road, it's a way of life. from all walks of life are into this cult. It's the best thing to go to on a Saturday at midnight. My parents still don't understand why I do this. Acting, comedy, I'm a Rocky Horror aficionado, and I think we're ready for shock treatment in the 80s. The sun never sets on those who ride into it. We just gotta keep going.